Hello, everybody. King Crocoduck here. I'm with the philosopher Gary Edwards once more, who has kindly agreed to join me on this uh, little errand to try to discuss everybody's favorite topic as of late. Um, hang on a second. I'm getting an echo from myself. Shut up, me. Okay, so... Uh, we want to try to understand what exactly a race is, um, and, and more generally, what constitutes a natural kind. Um, Gary, can, can you maybe start off by clarifying what is meant by natural kind? Well, the usual distinction, and by the way, hello, everybody. Um, the usual distinction is between the categories that, we, that are uh, taken as representing the way nature is carved up at its own joints as, 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 as things that are essential to the nature itself, as opposed to conventional kinds, which are more like artifacts or features of the, um, the decisions made by those who are doing the research into nature. And that's seen, that's seen as being a very significant distinction in the um, in philosophy of science as to, as to what marks off substantial science or objective sciences from more perhaps subjective sort of inquiry lines of inquiry so it's, it's a significant distinction and sub and even even categories like biological species are controversial it's controversial as to whether they're natural kinds or not so with regards to subspecial kind of uh, categories like race you can imagine it's extremely controversial whether those are natural kinds and um it's important that they should be especially for people who take a rather essentialist kind of racial nationalist kind of view of politics when we where in they think whether somebody gets included in the political group or excluded comes down to what kind of racial kind they belong to the way i've been thinking about this in terms of how um, we think about things like race and species. I've been thinking maybe maybe the term I'm using is wrong, but I think there there may be um, ontological uh, there there may be an ontological distinction. Um, when I think of different kinds of atoms, different natural kinds of atoms, you know, the, it's it's just the number of protons, um, and it's it's discrete. You know, you have you have a hydrogen that has one proton, helium with two, and on and on and on. There's no such thing as you know somewhere halfway between hydrogen and helium. There's no proton and a half. Um, so, so you can, you can speak very cleanly of natural kinds of atoms. And in this respect, you can, it, it's the same with, with isotopes, you know, it's just, it's just the number of neutrons. Um, yeah, uh, so, so, natural kinds are sort of like, they have discrete borders between them. They don't tend to blend into each other, which again, seems to make them distinct from what we might understand races to be. Um, and, and, and it's sort of the direction I'm, I'm, I think I'm going with this is there may be a kind of ontological distinction between something like an isotope or, or, or what we consider isotopes um, and something like species and race where, you know, one of these things represents uh, where nature is, as you said, carved up at the joints. And the other thing is kind of where we carve uh, for, for the purpose of uh, predictive power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that is, well... Even when we carve, when we take, we, even when we presume we've carved nature up at its joints, or we, we we assume that we've carved nature up at its joints, we're probably still doing that for the purposes of prediction and explanation. Yes. But it's the, it's how substantial, how deeply within the natural order that that distinction persists, and and certain things about its nature with regards to. Uh, um, whether it, how, it, how it relates to inductive inference, um, you know, uh, whether what kind of laws follow from it are the laws merely regularities, or do they have some kind of normative, normative kind of of of, of, of power to them? Um, and, and and you know, so there's a higher there's an ontological hierarchy at play, and and like you say, they 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 tend to be discrete. There doesn't seem to be smooth transitions or graded transitions between natural between what we regard as natural kinds whereas our conventional kinds seem to be characterized by some kind of gradation um uh, that, that's absent from their natural counterparts yes and just to frame with a little context um as, as i understand it you have uh genetic clusters um if you if you were to map out uh, the human genome um you find that different populations will have uh, their genes cluster around uh, the, with with some statistical significance they're going to be clustering so i guess 
one one way you might formalize it is um you know if if you think of a spectrum of numbers between 0 and 1 uh 0 would represent a kind of flat uh distribution of genes where where there's no clustering whatsoever and 1 would represent um you know complete clustering where where, where they do become uh discrete at that point Mm -hmm. uh, and then if it's greater than one, you know, the, 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 these clusters move farther away from each other. And then if it's if it's between one and zero, there's a kind of uh, overlap between the clusters. And uh, the extent to which uh, this is significant, uh, you know, whether, you know, whether you're closer to zero or one and by how much, um, then it becomes a question then perhaps of whether uh, using that metric, um, you know, let's say uh, the 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 statistical significance under this metric would have to be 0. 0.7 yeah mm -hmm. to distinguish between races uh so you apply this across all living systems and you see whether this 0. 0.7 or 0. 0.4 or any other uh such value um is going to have uh, better predictive accuracy and whether there's going to be a kind of consistent uh mm -hmm. principle across the board what do you I think, think with regards to well, with regards to races uh, as, as as the term is used now we can discuss exactly what, we, what what i think races are what what races mean but in terms in terms of how the term is commonly used uh, i think all living systems is probably a stretch it's 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 generally apply, applied in its political context to subspatial taxonomies or categories uh, so I, I don't think you'd have to apply it across all living systems you could apply it to uh demis to particular breeding populations um but the thing I, that, that that makes clusters, I think, um, uh, conventional kinds is that I think what you do in clustering is you select a set of alleles. Yeah, so you have um, how many is it? There's something like is it 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 percent of a, 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 a variation. Yes, yeah, like it's, it's, so so it's that's going to be there's, there's there's a target range of about three million. When well, you select seven. <laughs> so yeah, it's a difficult study. I think the, 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 the study in 2002 was like five, but say you select seven allelial loci, so you where, you where you look at, and that's your set. Yeah, so you choose your set, you construct your set. Your set is a conventional kind. Then when you measure the frequency of that set in the population, it clusters. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it, it and, and it clusters around clades around around branches evolutionary branches and family trees yeah mm -hmm. and in that context obviously you're going to start being able to um uh construct something like a, you know, you're going to be able to explain certain differences that's where that's where something relating to race as to race our folk taxonomies of race begin begin to to um to to crop up <coughs> To a certain degree, yes. But and these 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 distinctions are not entirely arbitrary. It's not entirely socially constructed. There's there's well, a yeah, the, 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 there's a component of of predictive capability um, sure. that, that, that's at play here. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, that's this is this, this is why this is why the term race reason can be a bit confusing as to what it means because you know and 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 it, it pays perhaps to understand some of the different conceptions. Of race that are in play, or the different ap attitudes to the to, to, to race that are in play, because there there are the, there are the categorical essentialists, and then when categorical essentialism seemed to be undermined, there were people who went completely the other way and and sort of like turned to a kind of radical skepticism, a racial skepticism, and eliminativism about it. Too far for some people, even politically on the left, because they wanted to conserve something that the construction of left for for emancipatory, uh, uh, something of the um, conception of race for emancipatory purposes. And then there was uh, Anthony Edwards came along in the early 2000s and and, and, and pointed out this this sort of oversight in Lewontin studies, uh, and that 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 gave rise to the idea of a population naturalism, where well, you can. <clears throat> begin to make predictive and explanatory inroads in terms of of, of, of those pop of those clusters that I mentioned earlier and in their relationship to relationships to clades. Um I'm of that last camp. I, I'm in in, in that I, I'm a population naturalist. The problem I have with the term race realism as it's being used now is it, it doesn't really make the distinction very it's not being used in a way that makes the distinction between population naturalism 
and kind of racial essentialism or what used to be called biological essentialism. I don't like that term because it's misleading in itself, but a kind of all or nothing kind of. It doesn't make that distinction particularly clear i think and that 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 that's 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 part of the problem i think it comes down to what 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 you think race is i mean what what would you say Rob, what would you how would you sort of understand the term race uh, as, what what is race well in biological terms I, I would think uh it's it's these genetic clusters but the problem is i don't know where one genetic cluster ends and the other begins i don't really know you know where the boundary is between the white cluster and the black cluster and of course there are amb ambiguities you know if you if you have uh let's say you have a biracial person who yeah. mates with a white person yeah and they produce mm -hmm. a baby um who now has uh 75 percent quote-unquote white genes you know from the mm -hmm. white from the white cluster uh and 25 percent quote-unquote black genes from the black cluster mm -hmm. um but the child is, is is going to be black uh, the child's going to have black skin but 75 percent white genes um mm -hmm. And it's it's not really so clear. The uh, phenotypes aren't lining up as the, the, we, and what that does that suggest that it's not a, you know it's not an essence. There's not a single biological property that's that's necessary for some for for an individual or a particular individual to belong to a particular racial category. Um, yeah, I mean, my view of what race is is that it's a it's a folk taxonomy, yeah, and it's historically constructed, but it has a strong natural history, not just a cultural history, and you have to understand how those interact in order to perhaps to the, the the goal. My goal would be to understand how those interact so as to revise that taxonomy, so it's, it it functions better as a taxonomy as a as a means of categorization. And to me, yeah, the 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 the, the clusters and the clades, which are both conventional kinds because because um clay the, the cladistics is based on population samples that assume that are, that are chosen you know conventionally and assume a lot about the, the 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 populations which they which they sample um so those are conventional kinds as well as the clusters but the, there's, the, there's the beginnings of a picture there as to as to how the natural history of human diversity into can interact with the cultural history so it's 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 and i i think that's where it gets interesting i i, I don't agree with you know the so-called biological essentialism as used to be i think nobody does anymore except perhaps on the alt rides and white nationalists do it's it's absolutely necessary for sort of racial nat nationalism as a project that there be some kind of um, racial essentialism, you know, some discrete boundary between who gets to be in the polity, the political group, and who doesn't. I think that's a, a, a given part of the political projects of, of racial naturalism. But I don't think there is scientific evidence for that. But there is scientific yes, evidence if, for population differences, which isn't yes, if, if one wishes essentialist. Yes, if one wishes to um be an ethno nationalist um they cannot at the same time be an evidentialist uh mm. i noticed that, okay. that there's a kind of shift to intuitionism where you know if if you point out these these genetic clusters um are you can't really decouple them um you know even even if if even if they do serve predictive capabilities you know the, the, it's not really clear whether these are conventional or natural kinds uh well i think it's pretty clear that they're, they're conventional because they're, they're based on, you know, you can see the people select which alleles, which seven, eight or three million they want to use. And you can see people select which groups they, they you know, which which groups they choose to to, to, to represent the seeds or the or the, the geographical origins of, of the clades. So you can you can actually see the people making the choices as, as you know, the researchers making the choices earlier on. And those artifacts have... Clearly, they're going to they're going to have some effect on the uh, on the outcomes. If you if you choose genes, for example, that 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 um, like MC one R, that's a factor for dark complexion, and I forget, I forget the other two. I think it's F, FGFR two is one for Afro texture hair. If you select genes like that, you know, if you if that's your if that's your selection for the for for the, for the set that you're going to measure the clustering of, clearly it's not. You know, people with those genes are going to have, are going to self-identify perhaps more likely to self-identify as being black. 
you know so it's it's not it's it's the prior the the prior experimental decisions have uh, are clearly influential it's just that the practicality ameliorates the artifice it can do that you know that the, the, these things these things bump up the predictive power and the explanatory power and they and and and, and they have and you know and so they are useful and so you yes. you you maintain them but you don't you you at the same time you don't assign them the status of being essential divisions in nature in nature upon which you can draw from which you supposedly can draw political kind of conclusions that, yes that, that i think is the essential that, yeah that's that's kind of the essential point i think uh you know it, it has predictive capabilities if if within certain contexts um but then you know once you divorce them from that context and you begin to apply them where it's not necessarily appropriate like like in politics as though it represents natural kinds things get a little bit stickier and you know as as, as i was going to say they then resort to this kind of intuitionist you know oh i i can tell that this person is black or that person yeah. is is white lawrence fishburne is black yeah it's just that well, uh, Thurman isn't it's just in, it's as if they say these essences are intuitively given um and and it's not clear what you're intuitive well, what's given in intuition is it i mean is it is it intuitively true that that bats are birds and whales are fish you know to some people it has been in the past but but it's it's a deeper exploration of nature that 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 that, that often leads us to reject what seems intuitive intuitive or natural to us you know science is radical in that way and it's a good job too mm -hmm. so uh, i want to maybe clarify for the audience these uh various distinct distinctions between positions broadly there are three positions when it comes to race and one of them uh, has two kind of attitudes toward it uh you have the race realist camp you have the population naturalism camp and then you have the uh, constructionist camp where it's divided into the eliminationists and the uh, the social, the, the, po the politically motivated kind of intersectionalists, critical race theorists, and so on. Do you think maybe you, you want to... Conservationists, they want to preserve some conception of race for emancipatory reasons. Yeah. Um, do you think maybe we can get some clarification on what these positions are and how some people are equivocating between the two of them? Mm. Um, well, well, the, 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 yeah, okay. I mean, first off, I think the, the, the view that's come to the fore since Christmas, uh, which is, I think I've seen expressed in that, that, that Garapé Mouthy Buddha video. Um, first of all, to me, that just seems like an observ a single observation sentence. It's the, you know, the claim that, that there are observable, and heritable character, uh, characteristics or differences within within the population. I don't think anybody would dismiss that. So on that criteria, everybody is a race realist. So that seems like setting the bar very low. And as you know, science you, you can't you can't claim that uh, something is a scientific theory if it merely consists on a single observation sentence. You know, proper scientific theories are much much richer than that. Um, and I think what can happen is you can set the bar very low like that, and that that's kind of like the, the bailey of your argument. It's the strong point that it's very easy to defend and to run back to when you come under critical pressure. Um, and then you kind of then, but then what people I think is what's happening. There's a certain advancing out of the bailey, which is the wooden wall around the keep, keep of the castle, which is much less secure. And I think that's the more essentialist position. You know the idea that there are there are simple biological categories that place people either in one set, one group, or the other, and that the membership of that group has significant political consequences, and that's the Bailey. But what happens is, if that comes under, if that comes under sustained criticism, there, there's a tendency to run back to the mark and say, "No, look, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, there are observable distinctions, there are observable differences in human populations. You can't deny that, and, you know. Or, or you set, or you mentioned population naturalism. You mentioned the clades and the clines, uh, the, the 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 clades and the um, and the clusters. And you go, see, this is a defensible, scientifically defensible position. Race realism is a scientifically defensible position. So what you've done is you've there's an ambiguity there as to what race realism is actually referring to. And the problem I have with, with, with the term is, especially in the political context, it's usually used to mean some 
kind of essentialist uh, uh, position. That's 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 the to that's the that's the, to most of my life. That's been the general use of the term. Yeah, the general tone of the term in its use. It's it's citing essentialism, the Bailey. Um, you know, and so that's that's why I'm not comfortable with the term race realism. The realism, because realism in itself is such, as you know, is such a loaded term philosophically. And there are very strong forms of realism which 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 rest on natural kinds, necessarily rest on natural kinds, very strong assertions about what's what. Um, and you know, those are the ones that are politically dubious. And they're not wrong because they're politically dubious. Believe me, I'm not scared of saying politically dubious things because you know, if they if they if they've got scientific reason, if they've got good scientific reasoning behind them, then dubious because the science doesn't support biological essentialism you know Lewontin's findings do still relate do still create a big problem for essentialist thinking mm -hmm. i wonder are language. there are, are there any uh you know i know linnaeanism is, is a bit dated these days it's all about cladistics it's all about phylogenetics but yeah. i wonder if you go back to the classical linnaean system i wonder if if uh, there's any point um on this kind of ladder you know species phylum class whatever if any one of these do represent um any fundamental distinctions it, in it nature gets firmer. it gets firmer as you go you dig down further into nature Yes, mm -hmm. I think I think that that's that's a possibility. That as, as, you, as you dig down towards sort of like say say for example, example that I use is that I I think abstract functional kinds can be natural kinds, and one of those that's rooted right down in the kingdom level is the sexual difference between male and female, between different reproductive strategies, different you know producing different gametes. Uh, and that's why I, I I think there's a better, much stronger argument for saying that male and female is a natural kind, um, whereas there's very little to set to claim uh, back up for the claim that um, <clears throat> race is a natural kind. And that's Certainly. not because I'm that's not because I'm less racist than I am sexist. It's because it's because of things I believe about you know the classification how classification works in empirical theories. Yeah, you just need more intersectionality. That's it. I just need to. I just need to be sort of like realize I'm a shitlord and repent, don't I? Really? Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, so let's take something like the class, um, <clears throat> which contains things like mammals and reptiles. These things, I think, probably do have a very firm demarcation between them. Um, you know, the, where there are no exceptions or ambiguities, perhaps. Um, is there not presently some? Um... Some some kind of dispute as to whether as to whether reptiles are a natural kind. I'm not sure about that. I'm not a biologist. I'm I, I'm just saying uh, for the sake of argument. Let's say there's there's something uh, that at one of these levels, you know, as you say, the distinctions get firmer and firmer, and so the ambiguities become lesser and lesser. Um, somewhere between that and down to race, you have this this uh, these conventional kinds, and then somewhere above that, you have natural kinds. Mm -hmm. um do you think it's a it's a good errand perhaps to find where that line is drawn yes but you do it uh, you, you wouldn't do it just on the basis of the hierarchy you'd also need to take the different things in like the like the discreteness and uh how, how these things interact with um uh inductive um inductive inferences there's a there's a there's a, there's a set of criteria you can't just say oh well this is deeper therefore it's 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 more essential that 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 is some some very essential things have been jettisoned from scientific theories in the past being closer to the core isn't isn't a, isn't a guarantee of safety of complete safety um so it's it's more complicated you have to look at the quality of the uh, the you have to look at the qualities of the particular assertions or the particular distinctions and relations that make up the category within the context of the of the of the broader of the broader theory or hypothesis 
and, and those which are effective and work and and and, and are, are least challenged by new empirical findings well those are the ones you can hold on to with more certainty not complete certainty obviously but you can hold on to those with more certainty and think of them as representing something being reality and something that's more mind independent yeah um, mm -hmm. And the things that are closer, perhaps, to the outer reaches of the theory, and which are more empirical and more sort of more like observation sense, uh, those those are more con those are probably going to be more conventional and a little bit more vulnerable. But you can't ultimately predict what you can't ultimately predict with absolute certainty or complete confidence what parts of the theory are going to stand and which parts are going to fall. This is you know this is why this is why from a point of view of a naturalist even philosophy is an empirical undertaking is a contingent undertaking we don't know where we're going to end up all we can have to do is improve is that is improve our understanding by 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 keeping on keeping on what general uh, research program do you think ought to be pursued to help clarify these kinds of issues in terms of how we categorize uh, natural kinds and how we distinguish them from conventional kinds I'll probably take a quiet interview and probably go for something in terms of a, a better understanding of, of our own thought processes and psychologies and empirical science. Um, because I think if we understand that and we also, we all have also have a kind of commitment to demarcation and, and, and um, epistemology as a, a kind of branch of virtue ethics almost, trying to understand the natural functions and fulfill those functions as best we can by cultivating the appropriate virtues i think that would probably be the best way forward that would be my epistemal my kind of active epistemological program so it's almost like quite it's in a kind of quinian and humian kind of tradition hmm. virtual that makes sense it's it's, it's yeah. interesting that comes into this yeah, I think it is. I think I think I think epistem to, in my mind epistemology ha epistemology has some interesting relationships to virtue ethics. Is that Arndt? Uh, sorry. Is that Arndt? Hannah Arndt. There's some of that in that, but I, I, I'm not. I'm not coming at it perhaps from the same direction as she did, or I'm not coming at it, for example, as the same direction as Jordan Peterson would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming at it from a very different tradition, but 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 I do think there's something in that 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 yeah, I think good epistemology and good methodology is about cultivating certain virtues and valuing them, and 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 sort of like introducing students to them so they become something that's that's valued and people are judged upon. And I think in that, and if that's the case, I think you know, I think that's probably the most effective way of 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 ensuring some respect for truth. All right. Uh, how would you recommend people who engage with race realists? Uh, how, how do you recommend they sort of go about uh, making their case? Because clearly, what whatever has been going on, uh, well, I mean, obviously there are, there are tactical errors, some very serious tactical errors at the end of last year. Yeah. Uh, to put it mildly, we're now living in what you called the post crowd era of of YouTube. Yeah. Uh, so 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 where where do you think uh, the skeptics? Uh, to her trademark should go from here <laughs> um well with, with regards specifically to, to 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 dealing with people who are have these kind this kind of racial na this kind of racial nationalism at the heart of their political program um I think it's important, as always, it's important to, to challenge the ideas and go after the ideas as much and the arguments primarily you can have a bit of fun at the expense of people in doing that but the primary focus has to be on on on, on the ideas and on, on 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 grasping the arguments that are in play and and to and bearing in mind mill's famous claim that if you only know if you only know the argument for your position you hardly know that you know that the the, the 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 real strength is in understanding the critical di that it's a critical discourse and to know the cases for and against what you stand for. That, as always, is 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 is, is should be the main core. And and to if you're going to be a skeptic, don't take what Descartes was doing as a means to his own ends as being what a skeptic is. Don't be a kind of radical modernist skeptic is, and as somebody who doesn't know who claims not to be able to know anything. And, and be more like an ancient skeptic, which is, you know, if you don't know, just say you don't know, or or, 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 or honestly report on um, the degree of belief you have, 
given your appraisal of the evidence. And if it's somewhere near 0.5, say it's somewhere near 0.5. Don't feel you need to, you know, sound knowledgeable just for the sake of it. It's because there are things that we don't know. There are things we don't know in in this in the arena of race risk. We don't see it, it, it very quickly gets lumped into matters of IQ, and and that's 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 a vague field in its in its own right. Yeah, yes. there is there I, is I, a genetic component to one, but it's a it's not clear cut how that works. Yeah, it seems right now in in terms of you know disentangling the nature from the nurture on the IQ matter uh it seems that at present that may be a philosophical black box uh what, what, what do you think uh, uh, yeah it is at the moment but the thing to do is not to not to <laughs> i've seen i've seen some people do this use it use that as ammunition because it looks incurious it looks unscientific to say oh it's a black box or you know, well if you're a scientist if you're an empiricist if you are you know, on board with the enlightenment and science and reason and you know you'll want to know and you'll dare to know separate or you'll be you'll have the courage to find out so you want to know what kind of research is is relevant what kind of research is done is there anything in the pipeline that might be interesting what are the conceptual issues that stand in our way what kind of research would address those conceptual issues what are the philosophical points that you know that need that need that need thinking through and, and 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 it's to be aware of those things rather than perhaps getting caught up in personal drama with particular people, because mm -hmm. an awful lot of people are focused on 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 particular others who they address all their ire upon. Uh, but you know, just be interested in ideas. You know, maybe uh, yeah, I'm that's, really that's... spurgy. Maybe I'm really spurgy, but I find idea often find ideas more interesting than people. <laughs> no, I, I think I think that's a very good appraisal of the situation. I think it's very solid advice. Uh, yeah, people people would do well to heed it. Are there any uh, any particular remarks concerning this whole issue that you want to get out? Uh, this isn't a particularly long stream. This is just a kind of means of clarifying uh, our understanding of the matter. But perhaps you have uh, some topic pertaining to this you want to discuss or, or elaborate upon. Um. Ooh, right. Um. Oh, it's interesting, actually. I might, I might do. I'll, I'll, I'll probably be writing on this and doing some videos on it, actually, because, because it, it is a, it is, a, it is an interesting field, and especially as it re relates to the politics of polity, the, the or the philosophy of polity and politics of who does and who doesn't belong to the to to, to the group. Um, <clears throat> Because it, it is a it, it 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 it's not I'd say a virtuous feature of human nature that we can be very quickly uh, prone to thinking who be, who belongs in the in group and who belongs in the out group and that those in those very immediate intuitions as to who looks like they belong and who doesn't can come into play in in in, in ways that aren't um, particularly useful you know they they don't they don't serve us well. Ultimately, even from the most base kind of uh, rec uh, criteria, they don't they don't maximise the number of fertile grandchildren that we'll have. Let's say, uh, um, you know, which is really you know. So, yeah, uh, is there anything in particular? I, I don't know. Have we have we clarified the concept of race enough? The uh, the uh, the uh, you know that that that, um, for example, that I think. I think perhaps the, the, the really important takeaway is a distinction between natural kinds and conceptual kinds and how we are able to distinguish between them and what the importance is of distinguishing between them is. Yeah. Yeah. If something is, if something is going to be said to have scientific authority, sufficient scientific authority to uh, place people in essential and discrete categories yeah, of political importance, then it must necessarily be based on natural kinds. Yeah. Um, if it's merely based on conventional kinds, or it's 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 merely it's 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 just sort of like well, you know, it is it, as if there's no distinction between something being a, nat a natural kind and a and a, and a conventional classification of, of 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 observable phenomena, rather than something that's more nomic. Um, that 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 creates a problem because it leads to false certainties. 
it leads to people thinking they've grasped something that's much more deeper than they actually have. And they can you can and people can read all kinds of things into that, like teleologies, ideas that there's final purposes, or there's there's a there's a there's a national destiny for the white race or something like that. It can lead people yeah. to read reading things into 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 uh, the data like that very quickly. And there's no grounds for reading things like that into the data as it stands. Um and so that 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 can turn nasty very quickly. Yes, the way I've I've been thinking about race, I've been comparing it to wave functions and mental states. Um, you know, theoretical the wave function. Yeah, these. Yeah, you know, if, if you take the wave function, um, we don't even know really what it is, or even if the thing exists. I mean, people talk about collapsing the wave function, or under other interpretations, they'll say different things about it. Um, but the you know, if if you take the square of its modulus, then yeah, you you get a probability distribution, and that data that you get is real. But the wave function itself, um, you know, it's it's not really clear whether this is a thing that is real that that is that is a fundamental principle of nature. Um, okay, so the, the 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 probability function is accurate. Things happen as often as it says they will. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that, that's 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 when you take the square of the modulus of the wave function. The wave right. function, um, yeah, the the, the wave function uh, is is describing a. It, it's a means of. Uh, Formalizing certain uh, features of, of the system under under consideration, um, so that you can actually end up getting the probability distribution. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you may so those are your those are theoretical posits. Those are things you posit within the context of the theory. Yes, and it's very useful as a concept. Um, <clears throat> but but you know is and, and, and mental states. You know is is a mental state a thing? Uh, it, you know it's, is is my brain full of these little units that we can look at? under a microscope and say yeah this this is this is a mental state um well, know, it seems to be sorry sorry Karen. sorry Karen. what you can probably be sure of is that your folk psychology the theory in which you posit meant your 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 mental states or other people's mental states or your conceptions of mental states would probably under a fully matured scientific psychology be rather different than it is presently um, there's, there's, there's room for revision, and it could be very radical revision, stretching right up to elementivism in some in some respects. And I think that that's kind of like a general condition. I think that applies to a lot of things, including probably conceptions like race, and maybe even conceptions like uh, of, 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 of theoretical physics. That, that as as, an, as a good empirical theories move forward, they can revise, they can they can they can affect quite radical revisions, and that's. That has cultural impact as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, does that does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, you know, the, there are there are there are things going on, and we don't really know what those things are. That's kind of the point. Oh well, yeah, we don't. None of us have a. Kant was writing as much as we don't have a direct intuitive grasp of the noumenal realm. Um, that's true enough, but. It doesn't follow from that, as I think some people have taken it being misled by Prussians, that 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 therefore there's some kind of idealism reigns and we have no grasp whatsoever of uh, of anything objective or mind independent. Um, I think there are good grounds within uh, a good solid virtuous epistemology for taking certain things to be real, uh, to be mind independent. To refer to distinctions that are natural rather than artificial, um, and yet it's a case of of working out what those are, what kind of qualities and properties those distinctions would have, um, and then and then and then and then and, and then looking for those, you know. And I don't think, as it stands, race, for example, the classification of race as observable differences in the population is anywhere near that deep yeah because they're clearly they're clearly there's a blending there they're clearly conventional even on the best scientific theory best empirical theories the the the, the population naturalism they're not natural they're not natural kinds they're not they're not essential distinctions at the very heart of nature and um, you know base pairs are yeah you, the the base is in the dna the the, 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 the and the in the snips yeah those are those are natural kinds but you're not you're not just measuring those you're selecting which seven or eight of those out of three million you're going to use 
and that that makes a significant difference to what kind of categories uh we're, we're playing with and what follows politically from that it makes a significant difference mm-hmm. and that's what's perhaps the I think. perhaps the next front in this in this conflict is going to be trying to make the uh you know they'll be trying to make the case that um conceptual kinds uh would do nevertheless have political value but they do. Um, I mean, look, the, the, look the, the, the things that we are, the particularly parent explanatory pair that we we are developing through a natu- through naturalizing popula- our understanding of population effects, that will have political consequences. Clear. I, I'm not somebody who thinks there's a strict is ought gap. I'm actually like Hume. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a meta ethical naturalist. I think the the best way to advance ethics is through understanding human nature. Uh, Hume didn't. Destroy his own project in the Isolt Gap. That's not what the Isolt Gap is, properly understood. You know, it, it, clearly we, we, we're not just calculating machines. We're not just reasoning about facts on one hand and on the other hand assessing values in a completely different compartmentalized way. Our understanding of the world and what facts are will naturally affect our meta ethics and our ethical and our, and our values. You know that's that's that that bleed between the two is part of what it is to be human. It's part to be, you know, it's part of what we are. So rather than trying to make some kind of Manichaean division between facts and values and is and ought, we shouldn't try and make the best we can of what we you know what we've got with that, which is it's a very interactive system. So yeah, we'll we you know if we if we want to make society better. I want to say it's 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 not it's not enough just to improve society. You need to understand it. Yeah. Also, bye bye critic. You know, bye bye critical theory. Bye bye foobar. So, you know, bye bye what Marx said in the foobar question. Yeah. It's 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 yeah. You need to understand society. You need to have some idea of how societies work in order to affect improvement. Or if you're more conservative, avoid disaster. You know, knowledge isn't knowledge isn't knowledge isn't inert in human in any human affairs. Yes, I have a little thing I call the twelfth conjecture on Feuerbach. It goes: understand the world and change it in that order. Yeah, absolutely. Because otherwise, you're going to blither- if you if you're going to charge in with all the good intentions in the world, but you don't understand what you're dealing with. I mean, would you? You, would you fix your car like that? If you if you learned that if you learn when you're going to an airport, they fi- they fix their aeroplanes like that. You're not going to be too happy, are you? No, probably not. <laughs> so and I, so yeah, I think that part. I think the, the yeah the understandings that are a better naturalistic understanding, uh, the things that come out of a better naturalistic understanding of 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 these issues will have a political effect. And I, I'm not you, you can't guarantee that it's not going to be controversial. Because the correct position with regards to, for example, race and IQ is we don't, we're not really in a position to judge. I mean, mm-hmm. there are quantity. We know that there's a quant, there's a, there's a distinct quantitative effect, and it's it's very it's, it's significant. But in terms of anything more detailed than that molecularly, we're not in a position to judge. It might well turn out that that that, that there's a there's a there's a non there's a significant difference. In, in, in between different races, what we could call different subpopulations or races with IQ. It could. We don't know. But it'd be bad not to try it. It'd be bad to sort of enforce ignorance out of a fear that something politically scary might pop up. That to yes, me I tend is, to agree. That to me is just like that's well, let's just that's like giving up on the Enlightenment or something. I don't I don't I don't fancy that. Yeah, there's, there's there's some scientist who said uh, some things are not worth knowing with regard to this question. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it's 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 an attitude that sets a precedent that makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah, it's it's a precedent that would be very quickly abused. I mean, it's 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 all very very it's all very it's very easy to say that with a noble sense when it's when the thing you know when it it suits your politics. But as always, you have to consider that somebody's going to use it back to you when it goes when it's contrary to your political values, and uh, that's that, and so so and it's not going to sound so noble then. So it's it's best not to sort of like 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 like, like have that as an acceptable attitude. Otherwise, it's just going to come back and and bite you. One more question: um, Do you think that race as a conventional kind is necessarily an obstacle to ethno nationalism? 
okay, firstly, with the term ethno-nationalism, um, to my way of thinking, all nationalism is both civic and ethnic because it's it's civic by function because the function of nationalism is is is, is civil to is, is to maintain a cooperative ecology and native you know what nationalism means is to have positive pro pro national attitudes attitudes to the character of that into which one's born so I'd take that question to be: Does it does it necessarily does it have consequences uh, for racial naturalism or essentialist naturalism? I mean, I know that's a, um, that's a semantic point, but it's 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 a semantic point that helps me think it through. I find it helps me think it through much more clearly. Um, and the, the answer to that is yes, because if races are uh, if our best empirical theories lead to our to our understanding races as as constructs or as as conventional kinds um yeah then 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 sort of essentialist racist racial naturalism now nationalism yeah it's 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 not it's not a credible position you can't you can't make the arguments for it that are being made for it um so yeah, it, it would have a con. It would have consequences if if you know, if you if you honestly if you just if you have to accept what follows from population naturalism, it doesn't entail the kind of uh, racial nationalism that that some people are, are wanted to. Um, so yeah, that's 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 pretty significant cons- consequence. It doesn't give people. It doesn't give certain people what they want. Yes, they would have to fall back on intuitionism, wouldn't they? Or some other, yeah, or or, or the grand narrative, the grand sweeping historical narrative, or you know, basically beating your breast and and and, and claiming the the love of, of you know the, the 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 future of white children and Aryan women or whatever it is. You know, it has, it'd have to fall it have to fall back into that kind of theatrics, where at the moment it's it looks cool. And part of this is down to the left. It's what the, the left, what the left has done. There are people on the left who don't like science, as you know, um, and that and 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 there they've had an exaggerated effect because it's very easy to look cool, like you're 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 standing up bravely for truth, and the other side are just like you know the other side are all are all are all ideologues, and it's often because of those what those left those kind of extreme anti-science left people have done they they really do enable the alt-right that 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 that, that kind of sjw leftism really does enable the alt-right in, in, in an incredibly powerful way um, and maybe one of the best ways we say of tackling the alt-right is for people on the left to just think a bit more about what they're saying and what it what what, what the ecological consequences in terms of pol- the political climate might be um yeah I, I, I said that was the last question, but I'm going to have to break that promise and ask one more in line with what you just said. Um, okay. In an effort perhaps to distance ourselves from this hard left, uh, uh, if, if for no other reason than for strategic purposes. Okay, you, you've got to distinguish all... the social construct from the scientific you... construct. I can't hear you. You went all robot and broke up there. I don't know if you've got Sorry? a problem with your connection. Oh, hello? Sorry, sorry. I, I apologize. Uh, is this any better? Uh, nope, you're still breaking up. I don't know if it's going out live. Is there a chat or anything? Is this is this is this just a problem that that that, that I've got on my end, or is it? Um, it, it may be just fluctuations in my internet connection. Uh, uh, uh. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you really you you're really intermittent. Try again. Testing, testing. Test one, two. Test one, two. Test. 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 No, it's 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 breaking. Do, can you can you log out and log back in? We have to probably cancel the stream. Yeah, that's, that'd be a shame. So 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 yeah. T- okay, so type type the question in the group chat. <laughs> oh, the the marvels of modern tech. <laughs> Do, 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 do. 
Okay, I'll say something for something to say in the meantime. I don't know if I'm broadcasting. Oh, the gremlins have got us both. So, yes, uh, these are interesting issues, and I think that they're, they're issues that anyone who wants to um, <sighs> the influence of natural science on politi- on on the on 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 the uh, political realm has to address so i'm probably going to have to address them myself oh here we go is there any advantage to distinguishing between the scientific construct or the social construct um i think there's an advantage to realizing that as an historical construct as as a converse the the, the race categories involve both and that there's a considerable natural history, uh, so that we don't just lapse into 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 a kind of extreme social constructivism, because that's that's no help either. That's a that's that's a bad thing. We need to work out the relationship as it is, not not some kind of relationship, not divide nature and nurture into left and right, and then and then fight for our chosen one on the basis of that ideology. Um, where the scientific construct exists for predictive purposes and the social construct is socially situated. Yeah, I mean, the scientific, scientific, um, the sort of naturalistic uh, approach, the empirical approach will help us, will, will give us greater predictive power and, and better explanations. It will yield both greater predictive power and better explanations. Um, so would good social science. And, and what I'd like to see from social science is it, for it to be less inherently hostile to natural science, uh, and that that will probably take some kind of revision as to um, what kind of natural laws apply to social phenomena. Uh, you know, it'll take some kind of revision as to, on the concept of interpretivism, for example. Uh, you know, and, and and the role of first person qualitative experience uh, uh, reports. So, yeah, the, the, I think that the, the the I definitely think there's 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 grounds to be uh, there's there's things to do in that sphere in the sphere of naturalized social science. Right here we go. Blah 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 blah. This is the weirdest hangout I've ever. Now it's gone really odd. Um, okay, so yes. So he says, say goodbye to everybody. So I'd just like to say goodbye to everybody. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I babbled on a bit of it in this one. And I'm sorry that it's ended up with me just babbling uh, to everybody at the end. And uh, there was terrible technical failures at the end. But anyway, thank you for listening. Is it, is it not any better now? Oh, 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 you're back. Yeah, that's better. Oh, okay then. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. I'm sorry about the robo waste for the last few minutes, but... Uh... Yes, uh, thank you, Gary, for joining us, and uh, we'll see you all later. Okay, bye.